Welcome to Living Life Unedited, where you'll be inspired to embrace God's grace in your everyday situation. For the next 30 minutes, be encouraged to deepen your faith in the unscripted moments of life, learning to rely on God's guidance and grace. Your host, Nancy K. Grace, a Reformed perfectionist herself, will help point you in your own direction to discovering the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now, here's your host, Nancy K. Grace. Have you considered a life of surrender to the Lord? We often think we desire this, but in reality, we know it's very difficult. We try harder instead of trusting God more and more. Hello, and welcome to Living Life Unedited. I'm Nancy K. Grace, and today we'll be talking about letting God's love and power flow through our lives to others. We'll be talking about being God's flow-through vessels. Today, my guest is Marnie Swedberg, and uh, she is from Minnesota and is an online mentor to more than 15,000 leaders from 35 countries. Marnie is the author of 13 books, a web hostess to numerous websites, and a syndicated radio talk show host. She personally oversees two businesses in the, in a re, the restaurant and retail industries. So welcome, Marnie. I'm glad to have you with me today. Hey, Nancy, and hi, everybody. It's great to be here. Good. I'm, I'm uh, really looking forward to our interview. And so can you, first of all, uh, tell me a little bit about um, what you're doing there. You're in Minnesota, and so tell me about what you do in Minnesota. Um, well, I'm going to exhaust you a little bit as I tell you. Okay. <laughs> I always say I'm a jet plane, and I'm either flying far and fast, or I'm on the tarmac getting ready for my next flight. So oh. that's kind of my two modes of operandi. So okay. <laughs> what, I, what, I, what I do here in Minnesota is I manage our family restaurant, and then I also manage our family retail store. And that includes um, 12 departments with a, a over coffee, espresso cafe, and a black light glow in the dark mini golf, and just all kinds of great stuff going on there. Oh, and sounds then I like also, fun. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. And then I also manage the online directory womenspeakers.com, which is your part of Nancy, and, okay. and it's the largest online directory of Christian women speakers in the world. And then I do travel to um, speak and do buyer shows and things like that, as well as uh, I've written 13 books. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. All right. Well, in, in, in between time, you squeeze in an interview, and I surely appreciate it. <laughs> and I, I see that your, your uh, past history has included fires and floods and a tornado, car wrecks, business setbacks, a burglary, lightning strike, ambulance rides, and more. Uh, not all in one day, I take it, but <laughs> I know that, that you know, that's a lot. And you press through all of that with great faith. Um, Marnie mod models that comeback behavior, possibility thinking, and profound faith. So today we're going to be talking more about that and, and uh, how you juggle all these different roles that you just mentioned. And uh, it... Come back faith is just such an important thing that we all need to develop to have that resiliency. So can we start with uh, asking, what is your faith story? Well, I am one of those fortunate people who grew up in a Christian family with godly parents who loved me and more importantly loved God and then really loved each other. And they led me to know Jesus Christ as my personal Savior when I was just four years old. Oh, that's wonderful. So I've, I, yeah, I've had the great privilege of missing out on a lot of the <laughs> things that other people's testimonies are made up of uh -huh. because God saved them from so many things. And he saved me from all those things, too, except he saved me before I even went into them. And so I just have had a real sheltered and wonderful life that way. And my mom really insisted that we learn scripture from the time I was tiny. So on Saturday mornings, I can remember Nancy being in her bedroom, jumping up and down, being ready to go out and play, but I couldn't until I said my five verses of the oh, week. that's good. Yeah, <laughs> but, that's great. But that's I have memorized, you know, over the years, thousands of verses, and uh, it's really made a huge difference mm -hmm. in my life and in my faith walk. And so I believe because of this amazing beginning for my life, that I've had the opportunity to know Christ deeply from an early age and know of the scriptures deeply. And so I have this perspective that I'm able to share with people who are maybe um, fewer years into their relationship with God. 
And it really changes how they think about life to hear me talk about it because so many times we feel like we have to get our act all together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's just, and, 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 and in the end, we will. We'll, our act will be completely together once we get to heaven. But right. in the meantime, there's a lot of love and a lot of grace and a lot of process and a lot of journey that goes on. And that's really my passion is to communicate to people that it's okay to be on the journey on the way to where you're going. That's, that's great. Be on the journey. And that's where we are. We're all, uh, someone is a little further ahead of us and someone is behind us. But where we're at, we can... Uh, be encouraged either way. You know, we can be encouraged by those further ahead and we can encourage those who are further behind us. And I think that's one of the things that you do with all of your mentoring that that you have and wanting to help people in organizing their time and uh, setting goals to uh, to get things done. And I've benefited from participating in some of your 21-day wins. And it's good to, to lay out those uh those goals that are before us. So how did, the, how did your ministry develop? Well, I like to say that I started mentoring women when I was about 11 years old. That's when I started helping with four year old Sunday school and children's church. And, you know, we're all leading someone, someone is following you. Someone yes. is watching your life and your actions and your words, either for the good or the bad. And the sooner you recognize that the sooner you can actually make a difference in people's lives for good. And so I think we're all mentoring people, but uh, God has just allowed me between, you know, the list of hardships that you listed earlier, mm -hmm. the list of accomplishments that we were talking about, uh, you know, what, what I, what I have done and, and even just my position, my location, God has allowed me to uh, minister to so many people, words of hope and help and healing practical things that they can do to really change their lives and move closer to God, even as other people are watching them and they're helping them move along too. That's neat. So you developed uh, some different mentoring programs and some of them are online. Do you, you do some face-to-face -face as well? I do some uh, group mentoring. I, I call it coaching the group. Okay. I don't, I don't do any one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Well, very, very little. I mean, God orchestrates these all the time. Sure. So I do them all the time, but, sure. but I actually do very, very little. I do a permanent coaching available online, but otherwise everything is group coaching or through the materials that I publish and the programs that I have online. Okay. Okay. So how do you mentor someone to have their faith help them cope with life? How do you, how have you done that? Well, basically everything that I've published has been come, has come as the result of a question, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. And so the first place I have people start is with the Feeling Loved book, which is mm -hmm. women were asking me, you know, but they, well, they would say things like, how do you find time for God? And I would, do you know how you do that? Tip your head and look at somebody and say, what do you mean? How do you find time for God? How do you live without uh -huh. finding time for yes. God? That's my right. question. You know, so, uh -huh. um, so I realized that there was a disconnect in some, a lot of women really are looking for the time to spend with God in order to have a relationship. But feeling loved really explains how God becomes the central part of your life, like the air that you breathe. Mm -hmm. so that you're not actually finding time for God. You're finding time for life. <laughs> oh, I like that. And so it's a totally different perspective, and that's addressed in the book Feeling Loved. And then what happened was that gals were really stumbling over a lot of habits and bad you know, addictions and things like that that were they felt like keeping them from their relationship with God. And that's really where the book Flow Through Vessel came from, is addressing this question, but how do I let God truly flow through me when I know for a fact that I'm not a clean vessel. How do I allow that to happen? How can I even stomach that thought? Yeah. <laughs> because it does kind right. of, you know, we all see our depravity, you know, it's right there in front of us. Yeah. And so those are kind of the steps that I help people go through. And then tackling one by one in the 21 day wins, uh, tackling one by one, the issues that are holding them up. Okay. Okay. That's, that's good. Uh, I've been uh, reading your book, the flow through vessel. And the subtitle is that, How to Master the Habit of Letting God Flow Through You. And you talk about the four R's in that. Can you uh, describe what those four R's are? Absolutely. And what we find is that pretty much everybody that knows God for any length of time does the first two R's and the last R pretty good. But that's that third <laughs> R that trips us all up. So okay. the, first, the first R is that we recognize that we have a problem. We realize that there's something that's 
keeping us from having a clean communication with God. Either it's pride or it's, it's sadness or it's grief or it's something. It's something big and it feels nasty or it feels terrific. And then you've got pride going on there. So whatever yeah. it is, you have to recognize that there's something interfering with your relationship with God and that God wants to help you. Number two is that you release it to God. Just like selling him a car, you actually give him the keys to that whatever it is, and you let him actually have it. And if I sold you a car, Nancy, would I check up on you next week to make sure that you had washed it and vacuumed out the floor and filled it with gas? Probably not, and if you did, I'd be embarrassed. So. <laughs> right, exactly. It would be inappropriate. It would be inappropriate. Yes. If I truly gave it to you, it would be yours mm -hmm. now. Whatever you do with it is up to you. And I'm just, mm -hmm. I've just released it completely. That's how much God wants us to release our big problems or issues to him. Mm -hmm. The third one is to pause just for a moment and ask him what he'd like to replace it with. So if I sold you a car, if I gave you my car keys and you took the car, now I have an empty garage or I have an empty parking mm -hmm. space. And so what happens scripturally is if we don't have God fill that with something good, that, that actually gets filled with something exactly what we had to go, took out of there, plus worse. And uh -huh, so we yeah. really want to pause for a moment there and let God fill us. And typically he'll fill us with either fruit of the spirit or hope or, you know, something like that. It's going to be a sense that God's got us, that it's okay, that we're going to be able to go forward without this thing in our thoughts, in our lives. Okay. And that's, then, the, like, that's like replacing it. We need, I like how you said that, to replace whatever it is we gave up to yes. replace it and have open hands and an open heart to, re, to receive that from God. Yeah. All right, the, the final one is the um, the response. So now all of the, okay, so you've had this issue in your head. It's been chewing at you, bothering you. You've been worried about it. It's been upsetting you. You realize that. You give, you release it to God. And then you receive his comfort and his hope and his peace. And then the obvious next step there is gratitude, that you're just like, thank you. That was driving me crazy. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So you actually respond then. You respond with gratitude. And then in that moment, I usually tease God a little bit right here. And I say, well, now that you've got that huge problem and I don't have it anymore, is there anything I can do for you today? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, that's, that's good, a yeah. lot different, Nancy, than skipping mm -hmm. the third R and going from release it to God, then saying, is there anything I should do now and taking it right back? Okay. okay right there, it's still my problem. But if I add mm -hmm. the third R and I really, truly release it to him completely, receiving something in exchange, I never have to take that back again. I can just ask God if there's anything I can do for him today mm -hmm. <laughs> since he has this big problem. <laughs> sure, sure, okay. Big, dif big difference. Yes, yes, okay. So let's say, you know, someone has a problem. It can, can I just kind of talk through this process with, you know, Absolutely. kind of a, a okay. Uh, someone has a problem with uh, jealousy, okay? Yeah. And I just jealousy of like what other people's kids are doing or jealousy of what, you know, somebody has. We may not think that's a real problem. Jealousy. How can we deal with that? Okay. First of all, recognize we need help. Okay. Talk me through that. Okay. So like when I do, when I do conferences, I, I actually have a volunteer come up on the platform. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and then give an example. Do. Exactly. Okay. So a lot of times what happens is I just say, okay, what is it that's really bothering you? And she may say something like, I'm just so jealous. It's just driving me crazy. All I can think about is that I want this, that this other person got, and I want to have it for myself. I say, okay, great. And do you believe that God can help you, that he wants to help? Yeah, I believe God wants to help me. Okay, will you give that to God right now? So they give it to God right there in that moment. And I say, okay, now, have you really given it to God? And usually at that point, Nancy, they say, well, not really. I mean, do I really have to like, completely let it go like what would I be like without it uh -huh. and I mean we have usually at that point mm -hmm. there's usually some tug of war going on because mm -hmm. we've had this in our thoughts for a long time and so uh -huh. it's hard to release it when they finally do agree to release it that God is gonna be the one to own that and not them then the next step is to sit calmly and just say okay just ask Jesus what he wants to give you to replace that jealousy that's been consuming you because that's actually been taking up quite a bit of space in your thinking in your emotions and even in your body and so what does he want to fill that with? And Nancy, it's amazing that it's never the same answer. God mm. speaks personally to each of us in that moment. Yes. And for some, piece, some people, they may in that moment, and I haven't had this exact scenario, but let's just say that in that moment, Jesus might say to her, I am more than enough for you. Yes. Yes. Okay? Just that confidence. 
there's just this, ah, this big sigh of relief. And now I just say, okay, is there anything that Jesus wants you to do for him today? Just ask him. Thank him right now and just ask him. And you know what? Usually the answer here doesn't have anything to do with the problem that we brought to Jesus. Okay. Usually the answer is something like, well, just go ahead and have enjoy the rest of your day. Or um, just there's a project that I need you to do over there, completely unrelated. It's amazing how usually the answer here is not related to the problem that we just gave him because he really is capable of handling that himself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's neat. It's neat to hear that you um, ask people to come on stage and they're willing and open, honest to, to do that. Well, and what's amazing is God, in fact, picks those people. Oh, and yeah. yeah. It's, it's, so, it, it's so fun because usually, usually somebody will get up there and they'll really do the wrestling match in front of everybody. Okay. And they'll be embarrassed because they, they, they want to be the perfect example. But I'm always like, no, you are the perfect example because yeah. that's what we all do. <laughs> yes, that's right. Right. <laughs> So, okay. Well, that's, that's neat. In uh, your, your book, you talk about having a direct flow through and a metamorphic flow through. What's Mm. the difference between those two? Well, if you think of a straw, a straw is a direct flow through in that there's liquid in a glass and you're thirsty. So you put your lips to the straw and the liquid comes through exactly like it was in the glass. Nothing about it changes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's a direct flow through. And sometimes that's actually how God uses us. He yeah. just pours himself directly through without any of us even showing through. It's just like it's just like his power or whatever coming right through us just the way it is. Now, sometimes, though, and honestly, probably more frequently, God uses us as a metamorphic flow through as a as a change agent so that he. So if you think of electricity, fortunately, When we plug something into the wall and turn it on, we don't get the entire force of the electrical field that's available to us in the world. The plug-in, the adapter, and if you go to different countries, it has to adapt differently. So these adapters change it so that it doesn't electrocute us. Well, that's the same way with God. Sometimes he pours a lot of power through us, but it isn't supposed to come through at that level. It's supposed to be adapted and more, you know, adapted to the situation and I always say, you know, when we're not letting God flow through us in a in a submitted fashion, sometimes we can really give someone a jolt. Yes, and, that's true. Uh, just yeah. because we've got too much of us going in there with oh, it yeah. and, you know, mm-hmm. letting too much come through at once and not ta- tampering it with love and with grace. And so I, I feel like I feel like there are different times for different ways. And God, God orchestrates those. But it's OK to be either way. Either just way. Let the okay. Holy, Holy Spirit direct that. Sure, sure. I, now that's, I like the, the difference of that uh, being directly, you know, that d- conduit, but also sometimes we need to have that adapter put on us because uh, <laughs> we have to get ourselves out of the way and, uh, right. okay. and uh, let God do his work. And as much as we might want to say or do something, it's still going to be up to God and it's his work to flow through us. So uh, let's see, do you have a, uh, a particular... A Bible verse that you turn to for encouragement. Well, I, 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 for encouragement, I always go to Psalm 91. That always mm. almost comes to mind right away. And then my life verse is uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 8, especially in the NIV version that says, But God is able to make all grace abound toward you, so that in all things, at all times, having everything you need, you may abound in every good work. And why I love that one so much is because it's all about superlatives. I can sometimes be okay part of the time, yeah. <laughs> but God is all about all times, in all things, in every way, having everything you need, abounding, you know, and that's that's the God we serve is that mm-hmm. there's more than enough. Even when I feel like I'm out of gas, he's never out of gas, and it's mm-hmm. so wonderful to serve that God. Yes, that is that is a, a real favorite verse of mine, too, and, and it is like, like when we feel short and we think, you know, we're short on energy and we're short on time but yet when we turn to him we know that he is enough and we just need to be doing enough of what he wants to do us to do and no more (laughs) instead of taking on more yeah I love I there was a there was a day when the kids were younger and I was completely out of energy I had let God take over my schedule and I wasn't using a clock or an alarm clock anymore and I was just letting him run it but I was so exhausted and I remember um as the mom of these young three kids, homeschool kids. And I sat, I sat in a chair and I curled into a fetal position 
and I was just so exhausted I didn't understand how I could possibly go through the day. And as I sat there, I just cried out to Jesus, and I just encouraged people to adopt the name of Jesus in a respectful way as your 911, which is calling for help, you know, your emergency 911. And I just say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And that day, I remember being curled in that fetal ball, so exhausted, so just not an ounce of energy left in my body. And I just remember Jesus saying to me, just go put some music on, Marnie, just go put some music on. And so I... I just kind of drug myself over there, put some music on, and within seconds, really within less than a minute, I was dancing and twirling my little guy around in the air. Mm -hmm. That's how much energy he filled me with. And so it doesn't matter if you have any left. If you're a flow-through vessel, God flows his power and his life and love through you. So no matter what you're short of, we can always have more because there's always more in Jesus. Yes, that's so beautiful that it's not up to us, and we are finite, but God is infinite, and you yeah. know we we can we just have to learn that uh, to to make use of that nine one one call and and say Jesus name, calm our spirits, rest in Him for that moment, and refocus our our energy on on Jesus and and let Him His power and His peace come through us. So I know recently you went to Africa this year uh, to minister to women over there. And can you uh, tell me a little bit about your Africa trip? Yeah, I went over to speak at a large women's conference. It's, it uh, became, it was a, typically just a Kenyan conference this year. They expanded it to Six Nations, which was awesome. And uh, the gals came in from all over. And, you know, they had so many struggles even getting there. And, uh-huh. and they just, you know, they're they're... Uh, level of poverty is so great. You know, mm-hmm. they just are, are so um, needy and yet their hearts are so huge and they just yes. share everything they have. There's beautiful people. And God really showed up, Nancy. It was so amazing to watch. And there had been a lot of prayer and fasting go on before we got there. But it was like planting seeds and watching the plants burst through the soil and grow oh, wow. right in front of our eyes. It was It was truly astounding. The very first night of the conference, the women's conference, and I did some business women's conferences too, but Um, the first night of the Christian Women's Conference, they stayed and prayed until two in the morning. And it was just astounding to watch God work. And uh, yeah, it's just been an amazing, that was an amazing journey. Yes, yes. I know when, whenever you're setting out to do something the Lord wants you to do, you're going to have those barriers to overcome. And, uh, you know, and a trip like this is no exception. And so, well, when you said there were a lot of things to work through to get there, but then when you get there, you you plant yeah. those seeds, and God does His work, and and you just sit back. You you are being used as that flow through vessel, and you say right. thank you, God, thank you, and you <laughs> yeah. watch you watch Him watch Him grow, and you grow the people, and people's faith come to Him. Uh, so, uh, how? Let's see. Do you, we have just a few minutes left here. Do you have anything else that you'd like to share? Yeah, I think so. I think what you just said was a great principle to live by, that when God puts some a mission in your heart, it doesn't mean that everything's going to be easy. It means that you're supposed to go for it, and you're supposed to just go forward, hold it in an open hand, but mm-hmm. go forward full speed ahead until God puts something in your path that slows you down, and then ask, do I go over, under, around, through, or do I pause for just a few seconds? I like that. You know? <laughs> yeah. How do I do yes. uh-huh. <laughs> you know, And it's amazing if you'll just hang on. So what I, in Africa, you know, they're, they're, they're so agricultural there. So I use a lot the analogy of planting the seed in the soil. And if that little seedling came up and you pulled it out because you thought it wasn't growing fast enough or it didn't have fruit yet, you know, and it's only an inch high or whatever, you know, it, that would just be silly. It would, it would mm-hmm. be done. But if you just leave that, leave that seed, leave that plant, yeah, nurture it, protect it, feed it, water it, get it some sunlight, protect it from the, the hail, though, then it can grow. And eventually it becomes what you were hoping it would be the second you planted it. Yes. <laughs> but it's usually quite a long journey. And we just have to be willing to walk with Jesus through all those hard things. Yes. And that's, you know, waiting on the Lord, which is one of the most, I think, difficult spiritual disciplines. There are, there's all very challenging, but that involves that waiting and trusting and sure. uh, trusting instead of trying harder. You know, we can, yeah. when we're planning something and 
we can't you know make it grow. We can add things to it, and but we have to watch. There's that waiting time. But I, I like the you know the encouragement that that when we we set out to do something, there will be that resistance, but yet it'll be so worth it because if God planted that desire in our hearts, then we know He'll be with us, in, in, and He is with us. But He'll He'll see it through because you know in Philippians it says He is faithful to bring it through to fruition to completion. So that's really uh, really encouraging for everybody to know that. So how have you, um, when you've had all these setbacks, no, the setbacks that I mentioned earlier at the, at the beginning of the show, um, how has faith helped you through that? Well, I've actually adopted um, a couple sayings that might help, help okay. listeners to get through it. So one of them is that in this moment, I have everything I need. Mm. In, in this moment, I have everything I need. And it may not be fun and it may not be comfortable and it may actually be painful uh, to the point of um, at times uh, the pain has been so excruciating you hyperventilate. I mean, yes, you know, yes. I mean, uh, or, you know, some people even lose consciousness. But in this moment, I have everything I need. I have mm-hmm. Jesus. I have everything I need. And then the other thing that I encourage Christians to remember is that Jesus Christ died on the cross for me, for you personally. And if he never, ever gave you one other gift, mm. that gift alone would be enough. And so every other gift that we have, every other mercy that we receive, um, it is just simply that. It is added on to the amazing mm. truth that Jesus Christ died for me. So I, I often in those moments say, it is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. And Father, I'm asking you for this one more thing, but whether you give it to me or not, I choose to trust you. And in those moments, Nancy, it, there's a lot of peace there because mm-hmm. it isn't holding God hostage that I won't love him unless he gives me this. I mm-hmm. won't love him unless he heals me or my friend or whatever. Uh-huh. Uh, but instead, I trust him because of who he is and because he loved me first and he chose me. And then the rest of it is his choice. And I ask by faith, but I let him make the final call. That's good. That's good. But remembering we... You know, that Jesus is enough. It's enough that he died for me. Uh, that keeps it simple. <laughs> it, it, keeps, does. it does. It does. <laughs> it keeps us uh, focused on, on remembering the most important thing and knowing that he has given us everything that we need. If we have Jesus, we have. He is more than enough. Well, I appreciate you taking time out of your very busy schedule to visit with me for this program. And uh, the wisdom and the scriptures that you shared are very good. So, um, and I, I do thank you, Marnie, for being with us today. Well, thank you for having me. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. And uh, because life is unedited, we can re- depend on God's grace. His grace is all that we need. His grace abounds to us in every situation. And in Proverbs 16, verse 9, it says, In their hearts humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. I pray that today as you go forth from listening to this conversation that you'll take your concerns to the Lord and let the Lord plan your steps. Let Become that flow-through vessel for the Lord. And uh, then you will see His power and, at work in your life. Thank you for listening today at Living Life Unedited. This is Nancy K. Grace, and I thank you and have a blessed day. You have been listening to Living Life Unedited, a featured broadcast of the CWA Radio Network. Nancy K. Grace is an author, pastor's wife, mom, Bible teacher, musician, and friend. You can learn more about Nancy K. Grace or you can purchase your own copy of The Grace Impact by visiting www.nancykgrace.com. That's N-A-N-C-Y-K-A-Y-G-R-A-C-E.com. Join us back here each week as we continue to grow up grace by learning and leaning on the promises of grace that pulse throughout Scripture. 